Hello, everyone. Welcome to Riot's Lunch and Learn series, the place where we feature all of Riot's partners and their interesting projects that they're working on. I'm super excited to have Christina and Benjamin here with us from Ubidot today to talk about launching secure IoT applications with Amazon Web Services and Ubidot. Just a couple of quick reminders before we get started. If you have any questions throughout the event, please do place those in the chat box and we will make sure all of your questions get answered at the end of their presentation. This event is being recorded and will be posted right to YouTube channel and then posted to the meetup page where you registered. And um, one last reminder, please do keep yourself muted throughout the presentation. We'll make sure there's plenty of time for questions at the end if you wanna unmute yourself. Without further ado, I'll hand it over to Christina and Benjamin. Thanks for being with us today, y'all. Perfect, Carolyn. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to see you again. Um, I hope all of you are safe in your places, in your house, your office, wherever you are. I love how tech can just uh, helps us just to be closer. So happy to be here in this lunch and learn. Um, okay, so I am Christina. I am Ubidat's BizDev and Partners Manager. So I've been personally involved in for the last two and a half years, certifying Ubidat as a AWS certified technology partner. So I'm super excited that we're actually building stuff that you can actually see and get hands on. So thank you all for being here again. Hi people, I'm Benjamin. I'm a full stack engineer. I hope you're doing fine. You're doing safe uh, everywhere where you are. I'm super excited about this new integration that we present you today with AWS IoT Core and UbiDots. And I'm I'm happy to present it to you. Back to Christina. Awesome. Um, so for just a agenda brief, what are we going to be talking about today? A very brief intro about UbiDots in case you don't know us yet. Uh, then why AWS IoT Core? Then an introduction about this new integration, a live demo, and of course, Q&A. So feel free, as Carolyn said, Send us your question, happy to go uh, through all of them as much as uh, we have the time to. Um, so yeah, if you are not aware about Ubidots yet, we are an application enablement platform. So from device-friendly APIs to a very clean UI to end users, uh, we offer just a whole set of tools for system integrators, IoT, like entrepreneurs, OEMs, to be able to develop and launch entire IoT solutions without the need to hire a software development team, spend thousands of dollars, and even worse, time to market. Um, so a little bit about where we come from. Since 2014 that we launched, we've been on a mission to enable a data-driven future today. So we basically have a two-tier approach. On one side, we have Ubidat STEM. This is our free platform where we basically offer forever three, uh, free, three devices forever free that are meant for non-commercial projects such as uh, university projects or brewing your own beer at home. <laughs> um, so yeah, we, we've had more than 100,000 developers with us, so, with us so far and we keep nurturing this community, growing it and we intend to keep it free. On the commercial side, we have around four licenses they're meant to fit any IoT project out there, whether it's a prototype or a real deployment out there. Uh, we serve any kind of IoT vertical, and it starts at 49 bucks, then it goes to 199, where we offer white label organizations where you're basically able to uh, offer your own IoT platform, but this is not about the sales. So go to ubidot.com slash pricing if you want to know more. Uh, in a nutshell, we're just convinced about the infinite power out there to solve local problems using global tools. So that's what we are here for. Um, going forward, as I mentioned before, we are certified AWS technology partner. So this allows us to just uh, have great tools, uh, continue to broadcast the message and uh, just be compliant to anything that AWS is certifying uh, in order to keep the integrations going. So we're here to know about a little bit about Ubidat and AWS, but the real question is why? Why are we doing this? Why should you do it? So uh, first of all, as you might already be aware, uh, AWS supports already billions of devices, trillions of messages that are already running on their AWS infrastructure. Just to give you an idea, this is very consumer oriented, but there are more than 200 million Alexas in the world. I even have one connected to a bunch of stuff <laughs> just because yeah, to do something with my time. Um, so 
If you are deploying IoT solutions, scalability and reliability are two key factors needed. So uh, AWS definitely offers a multitude of features allowing this. Also, uh, it's everything is about the API latency, right? So uh, it's, for example, if you have a deployment from North Carolina to Boston, it's different to have it from North Carolina to New Zealand or Australia. Um, so with more than 85, more than 80 availability zones and 245 countries, uh, this geographic scope is definitely a secure move in terms of Im improving your API latency. But this is more about the technicals. So I'm handling now to Benjamin and uh, I hope you have a good time with us. Thank you, Christina. So when we talk about AWS IoT Core, one of the key pillars of this service is security and permission management, right? So the service works in the way that you have one set of certificates assigned to each individual device. Now, why is that, why is that great? That's a very, very big security feature. It's great because that because in, in the case that one device gets hijacked, all the other devices that you have are still secure because each has its own set of, of certificates. Additionally, when you have all your, your certificates assigned to your devices, you can also assign an individual IAM policy to each device, which means that you might have some devices that you want to be able to connect and to publish and others to connect and to subscribe and maybe one, uh, maybe a couple of others uh, to do both. Now, just as a side note, we at, at UbiDots, we provide you with one set of certificates for all your devices, just to give you a head start in terms of your initial setup and your IoT application, and also to get you up and running faster. Now, I'm not gonna argue for or against, either, either way has its reason for existence and just depending on the use case, um, one is more appropriate than the other. Now, if you have worked with AWS, you know there, is, there are a ton of services, right? And the great thing about IoT Core is that you have some native integrations with other services. For example, it's very easy to send a message from IoT Core to a DynamoDB table, or you could send a notification using SNS. You can send your logs to CloudWatch, or you can trigger a Lambda function or even send your data to a time series database like TimeStream. So you, you kind of get the idea, right? And lastly, Amazon is the biggest cloud provider. They have more than a decade of experience. And as you know, they offer usually a very generous free tier. So in IoT Core, over the first 12 months, you get 2 million connection minutes for free. You can send half a million messages and 250,000 rules and actions can be executed. And for maybe for those of you that are slightly older than I am, maybe you remember the axiom, no one got ever fired for buying IBM. Well, time moved on and now it really has become no one got ever fired for buying AWS. Now, just to be sure, we're not paid by AWS we're to market that service. It's just a great service and we are very proud that we integrated it natively and, and that is all possible using plugins. Now we're very excited because a couple of weeks ago, we, we launched the plugins to all of our users, even our STEM users, our free users. So I invite you to explore all the, all the plugins that we have and that you have in your account appearing. Now, what is a plugin? A plugin is basically a tool that empowers you to obtain data from external data sources to be pulled in into your UbiDots account with just a few clicks, no coding required. Why, why did we do that? Because, for example, you might not only have your things, your devices out in the field where you receive data, but you might also have data in a spreadsheet, in a Google Sheet, and you would like to have that data in, in your UbiDots account. Or maybe there is a government database, maybe there's a public or a paid API that, would, that you would like to leverage in order to get data, for example, the European Central Bank offers a free API providing you with the latest, with the daily exchange rates of the most important currencies. This might be interesting and you might want to display it on your dashboard or you might, to want, you might want to use some of the values in a calculation for a synthetic variable. And lastly, what is growing more and more is we have satellites 
uh, running around the globe and they can measure a lot of things. It's not only imagery that they can do, but we have growing sensors on the satellites. For example, there is an API that I know about that measures soil moisture from, from the orbit, which is accessible through an API. Now, let's go a little bit more into the architecture of that integration. What is actually happening and why is it great? Because you don't have to do anything to set it up. So you have basically your devices connected to IoT Core, each device with its own certificate. You have the correct policy assigned to it as well, such that they can publish data to IoT Core. Now, what, what happens then? What we take care of is we set up a rule in the IoT rule engine. What's the rule engine? So basically, whenever you send data from your devices through MQDT or HTTPS to AWS IoT Core, every single time you have to send a topic. And that topic is used in the rule engine in order to evaluate if that particular data goes is covered by that rule and then a potential action is triggered. So you're going to see that in a second, don't worry. So in case we set up this rule and you send data and it's covered, then we trigger an HTTP, a HTTPS rule action, a webhook. This is a private webhook that you have in your UbiDots account. And then the data gets basically forwarded from AWS IoT Core to the plugin in UbiDots. Now, at that point in time, you have the power to transform data because you have a very powerful decoder that I show you in a second. And then the data gets posted to your UbiDots API and to your dashboards and white labeled apps. Now, the great thing is, first of all, you don't have to set up anything of that, just a few clicks that I show you in a second, and everything under the hood is set up for you. And secondly, this whole architecture works in a serverless environment. Why is that great? Because it scales unlimitedly. So even if you send thousands, maybe tens of thousands of data in the same second, AWS and UbiDots will be easily handling that, that, in load, uh, that, in, that load of data. Secondly, it's, it's highly customizable. I mentioned the decoder. So you can have multiple plugins in your UbiDots account which means that maybe you have your devices segmented by client or by continent or by country. So you can set up a different rule for each of these deployments and then route your data uh, individually. So you can have an individual decoder for every single deployment that you have. And lastly, it's also slightly more secure as every single invocation is executed individually, which means that it can happen that one execution accidentally access some resource on a shared instance. Now, I mentioned the decoder. What is the decoder? A decoder is basically a piece of code that runs right before the data gets posted to your UbiDots account. Why would you need that? Maybe you receive your, your data in bytes or in a different data format, and you need to transform it to an integer or to a float. You can do that. And what is great about this decoder is that it runs in Python 3.7. So you benefit from many of the latest features of, the, of one of the most growing popular programming languages. But we didn't stop there. We baked in a lot of libraries that you can use in the decoder out of the box. For example, when you receive data from AWS IoT Core, you can use requests to do an additional post request or an additional get request to pull in some extra data. Or maybe you want to publish through MQDT. This you can do with MQDT Power. Maybe some of you like data analysis, data crunching. So you can you have NumPy, you have SciPy, you have Pandas all at your hand. And for those of you that know how powerful these libraries are, I think uh, you're, you're pretty excited about that. And of course, we open the door to the whole AWS universe. So I mentioned there are some services that are natively integrated with IoT Core. But for all other services that are out there, you have Bodo3, and you can call any API action through Bodo3 Bodo, Bodo um, at the moment when you receive the data in the decoder in UbiDots. And lastly, we have also some utility libraries. For example, if you do website scrapping, you have Scrappy. Maybe you work with timestamps or date times, so you have Arrow to facilitate that whole programming. Um, and maybe you have data in for in, in, in the air quality index and you want to transform it to parts per million, for example. And then you have this library Python AQI. So just a few libraries, there are a couple of more, but I think that is very powerful and very useful for you. Now, 
why should you use that integration? Let me give you an example. How does it look like if you don't use UbiDocs? You have IoT Core, and then you have a ton of services in AWS. All of them are great. They have great features and a, a generous free tier. But what's the issue? You probably have to hire an, a solutions architect and potentially one or two developers to piece together all these services. Why? Because you probably have to spin up an instance, connect it to a database, to DynamoDB, to an RDS instance. Maybe you want to have notifications, so SES, SNS, you see your clouds in CloudWatch. Maybe you have end users, maybe you yourself have clients and you need permissions, you need credentials, you have your own domain with Route 53. So that probably takes a lot of time and obviously a lot of resources and money, right? Now, if you use UbiDots, you have an equivalent of all of these services ready to use, highly customizable and working out of the box. So all of them are low code and point to click, very easy to set up. And you will save not only a lot of money, but also more importantly, time to market. Practically, how does it look like? For example, if you want to send notifications when a threat, when a variable hits a, a certain threshold. So we have a powerful UbiDocs events engine that can send emails, SMS, even telegram messages. It can even call you or trigger a webhook. Or let's say you have clients, you want to have your end users just to have certain rights to see a dashboard, but not to delete data. We have a powerful end user management where you can manage the credentials and also API roles with very fine grained permissions for every single action you can do uh, in UbiDots. We have also a powerful log section that I'll show you in a second. And also, of course, we have our beautiful dashboards that we all love. And lastly, if you use AWS IoT core with UbiDots, as I said, you probably save a lot of money and a lot of engineering hours. And if we're honest, today you don't have the luxury anymore to take months of development and then maybe testing, because by the time there are probably two people that already launched a similar product or maybe a better product because they used off the shelf solutions. Additionally, as Christina mentioned it, there are over 80 availability zones from AWS, which means that even if you're in Tokyo or in Beijing or somewhere else, you have a close, you have an availability, send availability zone very close to you. So you can decrease your latency and then data is routed through the AWS internal super fast network to our servers. And lastly, the great thing about this integration is that you're not locked in exclusively to UbiDots because it's just one route that you can do. But if you have, let's say, one service that you like in AWS and you have an integration architecture already set up, let's say you have a machine learning model running on SageMaker or you want to analyze your data in real time with, with Kinesis Firehose, you're free to do that and you can do that easily. Now, let's look a little bit more into a case study that we prepared for today and back to Christina. Awesome, Benjamin, thank you. Um, so always from a product standpoint, we ask ourselves, who is this going to use it? How is this going to talk nicely with all of the IoT components that you know very well, like hardware, connectivity, cloud, and so on. So what we meant with this uh, brief case study is to simulate a production line. This is, a, this is actually something that we already have in our install base as a client. Um, so imagine that we are producing the required materials for ceramics. So we need ceramic threads, right? So we, in this uh, facility, there are some mills. So this is industrial mills that they're discontinued. So basically they get raw material and they are in charge of grinding it to finally get to a final product, where it, which is like a ceramic till, for instance, or a bathroom or anything that needs ceramic. So why would you need to monitor these mills? So of course, for performance, right? To just know if the mill is going, if it's fine, but there's an even better and more fun case study and useful, which is that um, sometimes facilities pay thousands or millions of dollars because they're being built uh, in a way that is not correct. So if you can actually measure the AC current and the voltage, you have the power. So you can then go to the uh, utilities companies and can, kind of like tell them uh, that they're billing you wrong. So this is actually something that a lot of use cases, we see a lot of use cases in our install bases where IoT just saves millions of dollars. Um, so for example, there is this company, NCD, 
we are partners with them already. This is just an example of what could talk nicely with AWS and a case study like this one. Uh, why I think it's very neat because first it's Wi-Fi. It, me it measures the AC current monitor. It also reports automatically to AWS, it's certified. So it's even easier to connect and deal with the hardware and firmware things and as well as UbiDocs. Um, so if we do the demo that I'm going to show you how it looks at the end, just to get you excited, we have this beautiful dashboard where uh, we have the mail, we have a map where we actually located it at uh, Riot headquarters because th that's where we want to be right now. Um, we are measuring the amperage in real time. And then with the, uh, uh, the voltage, we have the power. So that's what I was uh, telling you before. This was just the end. So right now we're going to the live demo to see how you can get data in a dashboard with AWS. And uh, Benjamin is going to walk us through. All right. Thank you, Christina. So we, we present you a lot. Let's see some practice, right? So here we are in our, in our UbiDots account. You see the beautiful dashboard that receives data. And now let me show you in the devices section, you have a new button, which is called the plugins. So if you go to it, um, I have to log in again, give me one second. Everybody knows Murphy's law. One second. Loading. Great. I log in. And there we are, logged in, everything fresh. Great, sorry for that. So if you go to devices and then to the plugin section, you see a new plugin that is running that I already set up, the AWS IoT Core. Now, if you click on the plus here, you see a list of a lot of, a lot of out of the box plugins that you can use. And I invite you to explore them as there, there are a lot of functionality connected, especially like in Zapier, for example, you have exchange rates. You can even have a full weather station implemented in your devices, in your, in your dashboard, consequently. But today we go with AWS IoT Core. So when you open a plugin, you always have like a very thorough step-by-step -step guide, as you can see here. So don't worry if you don't get any or to any points that I mentioned today here. Uh, you have a very thorough guide that will guide you through all of the steps. Let me put that here. OK, if we click Next then you get to the connect AWS with iUbiDots section. So if you haven't yet connected your AWS account with UbiDots, I invite you to do that. In case you don't have it, you probably have, you have a connect button here where you can connect um, your AWS account using the access key or the secret access key. We don't store them, don't worry, or you can use a trusted IAM role. In this case, I already have it set up, so I select my account. Now, this is the main section for this plugin. These are all the settings that you need to set this up, nothing more. So you can select, depending on where you are, you can select the AWS region, where, which is closest to you. In our case, this is North Virginia. The associated device type, I just leave it with the default value. Uh, if we have time, I can show it later to you. It's basically a device type where you can apply a specific set of, of properties to each device that are of the same category. And that is, the rule statement. Now, this is a SQL statement, right? And what does it do? We just give you here an example just to make it as straightforward as possible for you. So what it does, it selects the third position from the topic as device, which means this is the topic. So the third position is one, two, three. So whatever we send in the third position, this is gonna be sent to our decoder as a dictionary and we receive it with the key device. And at the same time, we, we destructure state or report it and we send it as payload. Don't worry, you're going you're gonna to get the idea right in a second. And you select your token and you hit next. Now, take into account, this can take up to three minutes to set it up. So I'm just for the sake of, of time, I, I am not going to create it because I already have it set up. But what it does basically in your AWS account, if you go to IoT Core and then to rules, it sets up a rule. So if we open that, you see this exact rule statement that I just sent that I just sent from UbiDots. And what it does, it attaches the action, the webhook that I was mentioning, an HTTP endpoint. This is a private webhook for you. And in order for that to work, it also creates a destination. Now, how about we test it? 
So we can do that in a couple of ways. We can go to the MQDT client. I already subscribed to the topic, so we can publish to it. So let me get the test payload. Copy that and my topic for a device. Now, before I publish, let me go to my UbiDots devices section and see that device. This one, AWS IoT test device. In case I would publish to a different one, it would simply be provisioned automatically in your UbiDots account. So whenever you send data for the first time with that key, then it creates the device and the variables automatically. So now let's test if I, when I publish data, data was published at value 70. Here it says last activity was two hours ago. So if we open it and here we go, we can see it's 1226. So let's send it again, just with a different value. 80, I published through MQDT and the data is already in your UberDots account. It is super fast, right? So if we go to our plugin now, I can show you the decoder and actually the logs. Give it a second. Probably taking some time for because of Zoom. Sorry for that. So that is the test line that you can use. You probably don't use it in a production environment, but just to give you um, and the idea. There you go. Here it loaded. So this is the plugin that's running. So if we open it, you have a lot of settings. In the general settings, you can add and you can rename it. Let's say you are in Australia or you want to segment it with, by continent. So you do Asia, sorry, Asia Pacific and so on. So you get the idea. You can do just, you can just add a little bit of extra information for you in case you want to have multiple, multiple deployments. Now, if you go to the configuration section, you see the exact same page that we had when we set up the, the plugin, right? So you just get it an, a reminder of where you deployed it and what region and what rule you took. Now let's go to the decoder. Here you see your private webhook that is just for you. Nobody else shares it with you. You see the runtime, which is Python 3.7 that I mentioned. And here in the bottom, you see this, that piece of code. So we give you a very uh, complete comment section just to give you a lot of examples to make it as easy as possible for you for the payload and also for the topic that you can use and for the rule. So basically the decode function is that piece of code in Python that you can use. And as you can see here, you receive a dictionary, which is called arguments. And in that you receive a key, which is device and the payload, just as we set it up, right? So, and in case you want to apply a calculation using NumPy, or you want to do a GET request, or you want to do any kind of data crunching, this is the time and the place where you do it. So you see, you receive the payload and then you might disassemble it, apply change Fahrenheit to Celsius, for example, and then return it in that object in the bottom. And then it gets posted to your UbiDots account. Now, given that we already saw how the data was posted, let's go to the log section. So we posted already some data. We saw it was at this is in UTC, so it was at 1226. So let's open one. This one was the last one. Let's open this one. Okay. And here we see the results. This is the response from the invocation. And these are all the logs. So you have a very powerful log section where you can see that the AWS payload receives the device, which is called AWS IoT test device, and the payload, which is this object. Now, now that we know how it works, how, how about I show you how it's done in the real world, right? So you would go to your AWS account, you set up a new thing. So let's say we create a single thing and we call it UbiDots Riot Test Thing. I leave the rest with its default values. I click Next. And that's the section what I was talking about when you have one single set of certificates for each device. So you can create certificates for only for one thing only, right? What happens is Amazon AWS creates three certificates for you and also one root certificate that you have to download. So if you open that website, I usually take the RSA 248 bit key certificate, I download it and then save everything in a folder. I obviously just for the sake of time, I, I downloaded the certificates already, 
just download them in the same file in the same folder and then you attach a policy so when you attach a policy i set up this policy which allows basically to connect to publish and to subscribe to any resource right that's the place also where you can find grain and allow a specific device only to to publish and others just to subscribe and the the, the other ones uh, to do both so when you finish that you click register thing and what happens is basically you have your thing in your things list in aws iot core and then you have certificates now what do, what do you do with these certificates let me show you let's go to the dashboard such that we can see the data that is arriving and we open a terminal now i am already in a folder where i have all these certificates right three certificates as you remember and the root certificate file so maybe a couple of you know mosquito so what you do basically is you prepare a command which has the certificate so you take the certificate file in the key it's important you use the private key and in the ca file you use this 2048 uh, root certificate file now minus h this is the endpoint let me just show you where you can get it in aws iot core you go to settings and there you are, you, there you can copy it. And then you select the encrypted MQTT port. And then the topic is the same topic that I, that I, that I published to when I used the test client and minus M is the payload, right? So remember that we destructure state dot deported and we send uh, ampere. So let's see when I send the data, if the data comes and here you go, there is the data. So this is using Mosquito. Let's change it again and see. And there you see the changes almost immediately. Takes maybe a second. Great, this is MQDT. Now, one last thing is you can send data also through HTTP. So what I did, I prepared a little script in Python. So just to give you uh, uh, the code, basically, uh, I set up the I set up the uh, the parameters, the end, the endpoint, certificate, the key, and also the topic, which is the same one. And then I just run an infinite loop, creating a random integer between 50 and 100. I prepare the payload and then the publish URL. I just piece it together. I encode it and then I do a post request, right? And that runs all the time. And whenever it is 200, it prints out the body. And after each invocation, it sleeps for two seconds. So an easy code. But just to give you a demo of that, let's run that. So you see every, every two seconds, it posts the data and it feels actually as if it's slightly faster than MQDT, but every two seconds you see the data and it's super fast. Imagine that it goes through the servers at AWS, AWS IT core, it runs through the rules engine, it then triggers the action, runs through the decoder and then gets posted to your dashboard. So there are a couple of steps, but it's super quick and super powerful. So that's it for the demo. I hand back to Christina. Awesome, Benjamin, thank you. Um, okay, folks, as we are coming to an end to our live demo, I wanted to just come back to our dashboards. So I just wanted to show you real quick that here we have our uh, application development environment where you have a bunch of widgets. This is drag and drop uh, and all of the Budats module. We're also computing this uh, synthetic variable to get the power consumption. And we also have a very powerful modules, module called the organization. So here we create the users uh, and we grant them permits where you can just uh, have a subset of your whole application. So uh, here we have the view of what a real user would be actually seeing. So it's only devices, no permissions to edit or do anything. And we have this uh, fictional company we created that is Control IO. And uh, basically this is our case study. And yeah, that would be it pretty much. So uh, Benjamin, if you go back to our slides, uh, as a final call to action, we're inviting you to test this out as uh, Benjamin mentioned before. We are launching these plugins also to our free uh, tier, the STEM accounts. Uh, so if you don't have a Nubidots account yet, we encourage you to open one. Uh, it's either the STEM account or a free 30-day account for our uh, full commercial license. And we would love to get your feedback, comments. We do this thinking about you. 
So uh, we're about to open ourselves for a Q and A if, or just any comments. Uh, yeah, so thank you very much for, for being here and for your time. Let's see. Um, thank you so much, Christina. Thanks, Benjamin. Wonderful presentation. Appreciate the live demo. That was super awesome. Um, I know there was one question that I believe was already answered and um, Charles gave confirmation that was answered and thanks Augustine for following up there. I would like to open the floor to further questions. I know um, they did a great job, but certainly there has to be at least one more question. <laughs> oh, feel free to unmute yourselves or you can also use the chat box. Also, just as a reminder, this presentation was recorded. You'll be able to find it on Riot's YouTube channel and the meetup page where you registered for the event. Awesome. All right, we have a question here from Tony. What is your billing model? Christina, oh, I, yeah, 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 definitely. Awesome, that's a great question. So we basically have four licenses. Let me share screen super quick. Um, one second. Perfect. So here we have our, our list prices. It's super.com slash slash pricing. So our first license is meant to prototype. So it includes 25 devices and it doesn't have the white label option or the organizations model. So uh, this is meant for like prototyping if you're still like figuring things out, finding clients, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, we recommend upgrading to the professional license where uh, once you want to deploy your solution, it's 189 a month, and you have around 200 devices, uh, plugins, data ingestion, everything increases significantly uh, in order to give you more scope to just uh, deploy your solution. We have unlimited organizations, so meaning that uh, we treat each client as an organization. So it's a subset of your deployment. So you basically decide what dashboards, uh, what devices, what alerts, and uh, anything that you want just to assign to certain entities. And uh, this is actually pretty useful because you can actually mark it up at will. So you pay about one buck per month and you end up charging 50 times or 100 times depending on your industry. So it's, it makes a lot of sense for entrepreneurs or system integrators. So yeah, that, that, that should be like in a nutshell, but happy to uh, sales that at ubidots.com, Christina at ubidots.com. I'm here to help you or anybody who's actually willing to commercialize an IoT solution. Thanks, Christina. That's super helpful. Uh, Amber Cobb, Riot's Director of Operations, had two questions, actually. One was, does Uber, UberDots offer tutorials? Oh, yeah. That's a great question. Oh, my God. So it's our health center. We have more than 200 guides of literally everything. How to create dashboards, how to connect devices. Uh, uh, we're very, very like low-touch model. This meaning that we have everything in our documentation including this plugin and these webinars, we do intending to just keep a lot of content out there. So it should be super easy to send data and yeah, yeah get your data in without and have your solution up and running by yourself, just reading our documentation. Perfect, thanks. Correction, I called Amber the director of operations. She's director of partnerships, so sorry about that. Her <laughs> second question is, uh, do we need to use a particular browser for the platform? Oh no, we we suggest like modern browsers, but you can sign uh, using any browser. And yeah, it, should work, it should work really with any browser. I think uh, over uh, Internet Explorer version nine, I think. But I use Brave for the sake of the demo for those who are interested, and it worked perfectly, which just like a derivative of Google Chrome. But obviously, if you use Firefox, if you use Chrome or or even Edge, it should be it should be working fine. No issues. That's super helpful. Thanks, y'all. Next question here from Charles. Is there a way to combine information from AWS and UbiDots into a single dashboard? For example, UbiDots likes to store numerical data and variables, but perhaps there are some textual data you want to display as well. Yes, that is a great question, Charles. Um, it is possible in the way that when the data is received from AWS, the data has to be in UbiDots in order to show it on the dashboard, right? If you have it, you have a widget that is called the values table. And it is, it's a sneak peek. It's not yet out yet, to be honest. Uh, but just I give you a, a, the info that when you set up this values table, you can show numerical values. 
but also textual data in the future, but because you can send it in the context, right? In the context, you can send not only um, like country, for example, USA, but you can also send the location. But in the future, it will be possible to render actually even a link or a photo in that widget. As I said, it's in development, stay tuned. It's gonna be published soon, but it's basically in the settings, you add context data, you select a variable, let's say ampere. And in case that value, that variable has in its values, a context attached to it, you can add the key here, which might be um, image. And if that image has a valid URL, then you can, you, that image is going to be rendered. Or if it's a text, it's going to be rendered. And you're going to be able to select if it's going to be one line or a multi-line text. But as I said, stay tuned. It's, it's under development. Awesome. Can't wait to see. Uh, I don't see any more questions. I do see one great comment that Charles here has been a customer of Ubinox for six years. Wow, that's awesome. And if anyone wants to connect with him and talk about his user experience, um, he put his email. So thanks for that, Charles. Um, we'll leave it open for just another minute if anyone has additional questions. Uh, Benjamin, Christina, what's the best way for uh, those in the audience to connect with you if they have additional questions or should they just go directly to the website? Oh yeah, so that's a great question. You can go directly to the website, create a trial and get hands on, get, getting hands on. That's like my first advice for real and connecting with us, uh, Benjamin at Ubidots, Christina at Ubidots or just support or sales, but it's super straightforward. <laughs> That's super helpful. And, and speaking from experience, they're always uh, more than welcome to help and uh, give support and advice. So we appreciate that. Um, I don't see any other questions, so we'll close it out for today. But awesome presentation and demo, y'all. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, you guys are great, as always. We appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. And we're also big fans of Riot. And you are the ones who make this possible. So thank you so much. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. Take care, everyone. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.